USA Warrior Stories is a not-for-profit organization designed to record, archive, and share videos of veterans' stories to help veterans make a connection with one another and to help us all better understand their sacrifices for our freedoms. I was working for the Morris Chain Company in Ithaca, New York. I uh, was building parts for 20 millimeter guns. I worked there for uh, probably a year. I didn't want to be drafted, so I joined the Navy. <laughs> I took my boot to Sampson, New York. I went there the first day of January, 43. Well, I, I told my wife to win the Air Force because I wanted to want go into the mechanic. But after I got through boot camp, why? Well, they said, I'm guard, and there I went. There was no option to it. It was just, you're, you're, we were the gunners on the ships, and that was it. I went from there to Arm Guard Center in New York City, Brooklyn. And I got out of there two or three days. Yeah, then I got a tanker up to Yonkers, New York. And then we went from there into Aruba and loaded in Aruba. I had 20 millimeter on the bridge. We went to Southampton, England. A German camera aboard a U-boat records an attack. I board, board the tanker there. We didn't have anything to locate a submarine or anything. I mean, if, if there's one out there, we had to see it in order to know it was there. We had no way of telling. There was lots of them out there. That, Especially from, from New York to Aruba and Carousel and Ventuila, because that's where your tankers were going and loading. Well, I think maybe the worst time worst, and, the, and the worst time that I was really worried about, was, and I should have told you, was when I was on the tanker. When we left Aruba, we had, uh, I think we did load in Aruba, it could have been Carousel. But anyhow, we had such a load on that we, the gun wheels went very far below the water line. And we got into a hurricane up in the North Atlantic. And that was bad. And we had waves coming over the bridge. And it tore our lifeboat. We secured the watches early in the, in the afternoon because it was so bad. But then it got worse, and they finally took us on the bridge and took us off from there. But you could just feel that ship just shaking all over every time. Every time that bow go down under the water, I didn't sleep any of that night. I had all my clothes on. <laughs> I don't know what good they'd have done, but I had them on anyhow. <laughs> we all did. We were in a convoy on, on that freighter, James W. Fannin. Well, we carried general cargo the last, the, not the last trip, the next to the last trip I made onto it. We had troops. They had escorts on the outside of us, and our ship was on the port side of the convoy. And so we got an attack with torpedo planes that night. Ships that was on the outside of us, was our escorts, they didn't stop them. They came right on through. There were three of them coming right. Two of them was coming right at us. I, I just looked at them and I pointed my gun at them and let them go. And I thought the kid there that was on the port gun after me, and I'm sure I saw some of his tracers hitting. And that, that one plane that was coming in midships, that just blew right up. It, just, it was there and it was gone. And the other one crashed out behind the ship. They hit that with a three-inch gun. The next morning, I, they said that they were afraid of mines. And when we had torpedo nets down. Told them there was something in the nets down there. So they got, when the 
merchant marine that he came out and one of the officers, he looked and he told him, pull the net up, I can't see, I can't tell what it is. Pull the net up a little more. Pull it up a little more and you ought to drop him, it's a torpedo. <laughs> and we don't know how, because we never see nothing coming from the starboard side. And that torpedo either had going under the ship or else there's a submarine out there somewhere. But we, but we caught it. And then they, they pulled us out of the convoy. And we went into some small islands there. I don't, I can't tell you what the name of it was. I don't remember. And they took it all. They, they pulled the nets up far enough so they could, they could work onto it and cut it out. And I guess what they don't just let it go right back down. Because they didn't want to take it out. They, they were afraid that if they took it out of the water, it might blow up because, they might, because it might be rigged. So they just let it go. But, so we were all well lucky on that deal. And then after we got the torpedo out, we went from there by ourselves into, Nor into the beachhead in Normandy and unloaded there. The beach is firmly in allied hands now, and the vast extent of the operation is visible. At the time we got in there and everything, well, the beachhead was pretty well taken care of. But at night, well, we had flyovers, but we didn't know what they were. With victory in Europe, all New York's lights go on again, and Broadway once again becomes the Great White Way. Oh, well, in New York City, when the, when the war was over in Germany, no, I was on leave, I was on liberty. It was crazy, yeah. <laughs> so were we. <laughs> I went off and went to the guard center. I was there for a couple of days. They gave me another ship. And I think I was on that ship a day, two days, day and a half, I guess, probably more like it. And they came, took me off, and transferred me back to the end of the fleet because Germany had surrendered. And so they transferred me into the fleet and I, and I think I was there about a month. And they come, told me to pack my gear because I was going up to Newport, Rhode Island. I went to the Navy base up there and there was a lieutenant there and he would look at my record and everything. And he said, how would you like to have a set of quad 40s? I said, I'd rather have, have a good 20 millimeter. I said, I'm very used to them. <laughs> he said, I, said, I think you ought to have a set of quad 40s. So he said, that's where you're going. And that's where I went. I went on a set of quad 40s on an aircraft carrier. That was the Lake Champlain. And we went to England. Southampton and loaded troops and brought them home. And I made two trips there out of that. And then we uh, they put our planes back on. We were getting ready to go to Pacific, but didn't have to go. And got discharged. They said that our armed guard was number two in casualties outside of the merchant marines, which were number one. The armed guard was number two in casualties as far as the Navy was concerned. I, like this, I mean, I think in a way I was one of the luckiest ones there were. <laughs>